So, uh, so anybody, anybody that can stay after we get unloaded, uh, we're usually done by noon, maybe one o'clock. There's always a few stragglers that forget that they're supposed to pick up their peaches at noon. Any extra peaches that either we haven't sold on Saturday or that people forget to pick up are going to Meals on Wheels uh, at North Boulder. Meals on Wheels this year has a, a little market called Niche Market that is open on the weekends from I think 8.30 to five. And so if you wanna send, if somebody forgets to pick up their peaches and you wanna send them to the Niche Market, you just need to make sure they got their name on the box and they can go in there and pick them up. Um, and hopefully they'll send you a check, not worry the Meals on Wheels people with money. From a money perspective, you can give me money on Saturday, or you can gather it all together and give it to me at a later point in time here at the meeting. Any questions? Pat yourselves on the back. We made it this year. And you're you're muted. Still muted. All right. Jay, this is Ann. Can you hear me? Hey there. Yeah. So Paulette Foss is coming on Saturday to Gun Barrel with me. We'll be there to unload. She's going to be handing out the, those flyers for um, Boulder Meals on Wheels because it's kind of dicey to try to get those flyers handed out properly. Yeah, I, I forgot to say that. Meals on, we didn't do peach pies this year. It was, it was a bit of a hassle to, to, um, to have coolers and whatnot with, with frozen pies. Meals on Wheels, and they're, if you've never been to their little niche market that they just opened, it's kind of neat. I mean, they've got a variety of different kinds of foods in there and all of their fresh things, their quiche, their pies, their cookies. Uh, I had a cookie last week and they're really good. Um, and cheap compared to any place else you can get them. Um, but they're going to do pies. And between the 14th and the 21st, and we're going to have flyers for this to help try to help them out. Uh, they're going to do peach pies for, uh, I think, a, a 10 or 15% discount if somebody goes in and, uh, and orders a peach pie. So uh, we're going to have flyers at all the locations to let people know that they can go and do that, try to help out Meals on Wheels. Awesome. Thank you again, Bob. Um, thanks, Ann, for the reminder. Just uh, heads up, Bob, I'm available all day Saturday, all day Sunday, so just put me wherever you need me. All right. Well, thank you. Again, for a reminder and for those who may not be familiar, this is our largest fundraiser of the year. This is where we get most of our funding in order to pay for grants in order to pay for community services that we do, in order to pay for many of the aspects of what we give in our foundation to the community and the world. So please, if you have time or if you can make time, uh, all the effort, even if you're there, just help and check people in for their boxes. It's gonna be beneficial and helpful. Um, Beth, has a question. Beth, please. Are we putting rotary flyers in the peach boxes? Are we putting rotary flyers in the peach boxes? And did you put any together? We had, Bob, Bob picked up the flyers. Paulette is going to be handing them out. Not everybody needs, well, okay, yeah. But it's just, it, we tried this last year with, with invitations to Rotary and it just, it didn't, it wasn't smooth. So she has uh, volunteered uh, to do that and she can be sitting there. And a lot of people do know her in the community. So um, we're not, so she's handing them out. Yeah, we did talk about this, Bob, that we didn't want to put them in every single box because a lot of people are buying so many. So I think that the idea was to hand them out. Right, Ann, we're doing both. I couldn't hear what he said. Oh, we're doing a Meals on Wheels flyer and we are doing a, um, the rotary flyer, right? 
Uh, yes, if you, if, you, if you tell me, I can print that up because there's a cost involved. We can talk about that later. All right, we'll talk about it later. All right. Great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, here's a fun time. <laughs> any guest introductions? I've got a microphone here and we'll switch into the crowd. So, any guests here with us today that people have brought? Yes. Uh, a guest is John Springfield. He's here for the second time. So, good morning, and uh, thanks for letting me come back. So for everybody that was here last week, uh, thanks. <laughs> All right, any other guests today? All right, great. Well, it's always awesome to have someone come back a second time. <laughs> especially with the mayhem on this table here i feel like we're we're just asking for people to be fearful and run away from us <laughs> all right um we're gonna go through these quick so i want to get to our program but we've heard about most of them again for joe hinton and community service updates please contact joe for habitat for isabel road cleanup uh super important to reach out and email joe to let him know you're planning to go and he'll make sure that you've got all the information you need to sign up, even though we sent it out, but he'll make sure that you're on all of that. Also, just a reminder from last week that Beth's grant committee, um, please let her know if you're intending to join. Um, it's not a massive time commitment and perhaps you can only join her committee to help with maybe one grant evaluation versus every single one that we do in the club. That's also okay, just let her know. Um, also, I, I've seen a little talk about the district grant ideas, so please keep those rolling into Beth. And if you have ideas to do a, a district grant with the club, Beth will help us figure out how to get uh, applications in, see if we can get some of that grant funding from our district. All right, now this is fast coming. On the 15th, the literacy award deadlines are coming. That's in four days. So if you have an idea or you've got a community member for the literacy award that you have not helped submit and they don't have an application in, please get on that. You only got a couple more days. We've got four applications in now. Maybe a fifth one might've come in yesterday. So we've got, we've got a few. There's gonna be a lot of reviews this time, um, but email them to me. That goes to the president of the club. So my email address is my name at Gmail. Last update, which I didn't take off the top one. Sorry about that. Greenhouse Scholars. Um, we have the Venus to Miles bike ride where you, Men can dress in dresses, or as women, I suppose. And women, it's a, a bike ride for a fundraiser for Greenhouse Scholars. So it should be a lot of fun. I think we have a lot of people here who like to put on a dress. So um, I don't know, excited to see him. I see John smiling. I think he's got ideas already. <laughs> awesome. This is a great organization to support this club. Oh, great. Well, that might be a better role for someone like me who doesn't have a road bike anymore. I can go out there and tool around on the mountain bike and wear my dress. All right. You don't have um, to wear a dress, you can wear a pink tutu. Um, just the tutu? I, I'll do it, Ann, just the tutu. No. All right, you got it. No. <laughs> you asked for it. Um, more updates. Okay. <laughs> More Grand Lake Fire um, work is being done for the East Troublesome Fire from last year. Uh, as we've all been experiencing the last week or so, we've had a lot of smoke coming in from California and they've definitely been experiencing a lot of what we experienced last year. Um, on that note, there's a lot of work still to be done up in Grand Lake. So if you have the ability, please check your district emails and sign up to go up there and, and provide some support on rebuilding. Uh, again, Woo Humanity Bike Event, they're like emailing me like crazy right now. So I'm just going to do another plug. If you have a road bike and you want to go ride even three miles, they would love to have you come. Um, it's a good fundraiser for the district. It's a good fundraiser for our club. It's a great fundraiser for Rotary. Um, so that's on September 25th. And also, if you just want to volunteer, it's another great opportunity where you can go and be at a water station monitoring station and that's just a few days before the greenhouse scholars one so 
You can have a bike filled weekend. Um, Rockies game is the day after, and that's a Polio Plus fundraiser. And they said that if we get enough people to buy tickets, Ray Anderson, our district governor, will get to throw out the first pitch and give like a little plug for Rotary, I think is what they said. So uh, I'm going. I bought a bunch of tickets. I think Lou said he's going to be going. So if you guys are interested, grab some tickets, come and join us. It'll be fun. Uh, it's against the Giants. So if you don't like the Giants, it's another great reason to go. And then just a quick plug. We started to see a lot of this come through last month, but um, the international convention is in Houston in June next year. So it's a lot easier travel than Taipei. If you are interested, um, definitely go check it out. You can put a reservation in now to sign up for that conference. I'll be going. Oh, all right. Now it is time for happy bucks. So for those who are unfamiliar, which I don't think anyone here is, but I'll do it quick. Uh, happy bucks right now is for um, GA 2030 which is um, Roger Cabbage's nonprofit in our club. Our board voted for this month's contributions to go to Roger's organization. This um, Happy Bucks is just a time where you can provide, you know, a little bit of support for this organization and give us some, for the good of the order, tell us, you know, what, uh, what's been going on in your life or announcements you want to make for the club. So uh, first I'll go online. Does anyone online have any Happy Bucks today? Well, I just had uh, a hammer toe operation on three on four toes, so that's why I'm not there. And oh, I may not be there for a couple of weeks, but I will pick up my peaches, Bob. Well, we'll be glad to see you this weekend to get peaches. Anyone else online? Yeah, this is Ann. Um... What do we do? We send a check to Mary Beth for Happy Bucks? Sure. Sorry. Yeah, okay. So I just wanted her to understand that. So we'll, we'll uh, figure out Bitcoin if that's all you got. We'll figure it out. No, no, no that's not it. <laughs> I just I just wanted to let everybody know. Uh, Paulette Boss and I did the Rotary 101 yesterday. It was uh, very interesting, and it's a great way for people who uh, want to know more about Rotary. Um, it's a great membership tool, So and it was fun. And they were very uh, accommodating for somebody who has low vision. They, they sent the, um, the, the PowerPoint slides prior to the meeting so that you could actually see them. And they were very, they, it was terrific. So I was very happy to, to do that, to see it done well. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. All right, first happy bucks. We're gonna go to this table. I just want to say that I went to the Greenhouse Scholars event on Sunday, and it was phenomenal seeing these kids that have been able to go beyond the trials and tribulations of their lives to get these kind of scholarships is really inspiring. And uh, Marty and Bob and Dave Turner were there. So. This is a happy dollar for the one good thing that's going on. They restuccoed the front of my house after they tore it off looking for hidden damage in the lawsuit that we're in. And the stucco actually matched the rest of my house. And so that is a happy moment amidst so many other thorns on the roses. A couple of things. First of all, I'm so happy to see Brian here. Yay, Brian. <laughs> and the second thing I just want, even though I know he ha has help along the way, I want to do a shout out to Bob. Uh, for all his work with the peach cells. Um, you are so appreciated, Bob. I visited Marianne Eckert Monday in her new home. And if you check Facebook, you'll see how happy she is there. And she says hi to everyone. Peaches are almost done. I am uh, happy to be here. This is my second attempt. You know, I'm technologically challenged and uh, that's why I didn't attend meetings for a year and a half. Anyway, uh, this place is hard to find. Did you know that? Anyway, so finally I went back to MapQuest and printed a real map. We'll keep working on that. I'm just happy to be here. 
You. Um, happy to say I helped with the fireworks display at the Larimer County Fair. Um, Boulder County didn't have their county fair this year, kind of disappointing, but the Midway was very crowded. It was a great time. Thanks, Joe. Yes. I visited with Mary Man, uh, Mary Ann as well, and she seems to be enjoying her new home. And I uh, purchased a box of um, peaches for her as a housewarming gift from the Rotary Club. So visit her. She really likes people coming over and seeing her. <laughs> yeah. yep. Happy to have my wife back from Castor permanently. Woo! Well, I will throw in some happy bucks. Um, I'll put them in my check to Mary Beth, but. Oh, well, it's really good to have you back, Terry. I do feel bad for Marianne though, because I think I bought her four cases of peaches. So she's going to end up not knowing to do with all that. <laughs> no, I didn't. I would never do that to her. That would just be brutal. All right. Well, we're on to our program. And um, I wanted to have an opportunity here to introduce Chuck, but I think that Chuck probably doesn't need much of an introduction. So Bill, do you want to do an introduction real quick? All right. I appreciate that. So it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Chuck Cow. Chuck is a native Coloradoan. He is a graduate of Denver University. His career was a lawyer. He was also a muni municipal judge, a state representative, and a retired army JAG. Was that Colonel or General? Colonel, Colonel. okay, so welcome Chuck. Yes, please. Yeah, you'll... So we'll, we'll get, yeah, Chuck, you can take your mask off up here. We got the microphone for you on your lapel. It should be on Terry. If we could swap on his mic too, that'd be great. Um, real quick, just Chuck asked me to show you and read the information here. So there's kind of some trivia topics that were mentioned. You're not going to be able to see this very well, but all sorts of good stuff, including the very first one being my place of work, which is, uh, well, I work at the USGS and that's US Geography. There's group participation, no winners or losers. Uh, it's kind of a free for all. So put on your thinking cap and rejuvenate your memory cells. Feel free to speak out loud without being recognized. That means people online, please just jump in. You may be asked to choose a topic of interest from the above list. Chuck will then ask, a question related to that subject, which you and everybody else are free to answer by shouting. Do not be afraid to be wrong. Hints may be given, and if no one guesses correctly, Chuck will provide the answer then move on to another person's chosen topic. This will be fast moving so we can cover as many subjects as time allows. The goal is for all of us to have fun while hopefully learning something new. The best and most memorable trivia involves some surprising out of the box thinking. So be on the lookout for answers that defy conventional wisdom. Regardless of the answer, the main objective should be to have fun. That's the fifth test on the four-way test and have fun guessing and being wrong. All right, Chuck, please come and join us up here. If anything I can do to help you, let me know. And uh, Sherry's got your mic ready. So whenever you start, you'll be good to go. Just so you can tell, this is how people can see you online. That little screen there. Okay. Cool. I hope you uh, all get a chance to read this. Uh, because you're going to participate. This is not like any other program maybe that you've had. Because you're going to be the program. I'm just the moderator. You got it? Do you understand the topics? <laughs> now you can pick any topic you want. And it can be something you're interested in, 
something you think you're, you know, something you don't know anything about. But everybody gets to answer and you shout it out. Now, why am I doing this? When I was in college, somebody told me that, that notes of a student go from the lips of the professor to the paper of the student without going through the heads of either one. And I don't want that to be the case here. So who's going to volunteer a subject so I can get to the first trivia question? You asked history. What? You asked history. U.S. history. U.S. history. Do you want, do you want uh, uh, Civil War history? Do you want Revolutionary history? Or do you want recent history? What? Gladstone Purchase. What'd you say, Joe? Louisiana Purchase? No. Oh, sure. That'll work. Louisiana Purchase. 1803. All right. What do you want to know? Okay. Louisiana Purchase in 1803. And um, what happened to Lewis and Clark? Do you know? One of them committed suicide, one of them went back to Jefferson, right? Okay. Another subject for you. How about you? Pick one. What? I, I, I'm sorry, I can't always hear. Theater. It's not on here, but what about theater? Fear? Theater. 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 Oh, like Whoa. That. It's not on now. Oh, you're, you're getting tricky now. You can't do that. I don't know everything. I know a lot about some of these subjects, but I don't know much about theater. How about take movies? I'll take movies. All right, tell me, anybody, who has won the most Academy Awards? Number, you know, best Oscar, actress and actor. And don't tell me it's, well. Who? A, lady A, she got an A on that. And you know how many, how many, how many Oscars? Three. African Queen was the most notable. How about the actor with most act, uh, Oscars? Anybody see the movie in 2016? Called Lincoln. Oh. He's got three also. And don't say street got it because she's been nominated a lot, but she hadn't got that many. So that's my, who is the youngest actress ever to win an Oscar? You. Right on, very good. Who? Right on, for what movie? That's right, 1973, excellent, excellent. Let's move to another one, another subject, anybody? I can't hear it. Like, Repeat the answer they give for the Zoom people on the Zoom. Uh, the question is, can you please repeat answers first? Because people on Zoom can't hear unless we get the microphone to the answerer. Because, so it's not a question. It's actually um, a request. The request is that when someone answers in the crowd, because the people on Zoom cannot hear unless there's a microphone, if you could repeat the answer that person okay. gave, that would be super helpful. Thank okay, you. Tatum right. O'Neill was the right answer to the right, young, the question of the youngest actress. What movie has, I'll go one more on that. What movie has more people seen over and over again in the US than any other movie? <laughs> right on, Gone with the Wind. A lot of people think it was the, uh, it Gone was with Gone with the Wind. I've seen it a dozen times. I'm sure you have too. Okay, another subject. All right, let's go with nuclear weaponry just because I've got a microphone in my hand. Speak up because I can't always hear. I said nuclear weaponry. Nuclear weapons. Well, I've got only one question on that. I think there are now 10 nations, depending on whether you count North Korea as a nuclear power that have nuclear weapons. One country had nuclear weapons and gave them up to the U.S. Who can tell me who country that was? Anybody? Spain? It's not in the... Is it Spain? It's in Africa. Africa. 
heard South Africa. That is correct. And who did it? Mandela did it in 1991 after they went through the transition to a, uh, a combined government. That's the country that did it. Another subject, anybody? Presidents in history and geography are my favorites. But we heard food. food. What? Food. Is that on your list? It is. Food. Food. Edible food. I'm sorry. I, I'm, really, <laughs> I'm really having a hard time hearing. Food. 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 Oh. oh, God. Food. Food, of course. Okay, here we are. Tell me the only food that never spoils. Honey. Right. We heard honey from How Joanne. many of you knew that? How honey. many of you knew that? And how do they know that honey never spoils? How do they know? Because they keep finding it in ancient tombs. <laughs> they found it in the, uh, in the tombs of, in Egypt. It wasn't very eatable. It's pretty black. But it, it is edible. And that's right. Now, the other question I have on food, can you name three vegetables for me that are perennial, that never have to be replanted? Every year. Potatoes. Perennial. What? Potatoes. Potatoes. No, 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 not potatoes. Asparagus. Asparagus? Asparagus is one. Name another. Oh. Rhubarb. Rhubarb's another. Anybody else? I got a third. Artichoke is the other. Uh, oh. Okay. Next subject, anybody back in the back? Nice and loud. Baseball. Baseball. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, there are two people that have hit 400 three times. Name those two players. Ted Williams. Ted Williams only did it once, 1941. That's a good guess, though. The best, you know, if Ted Marty Williams wasn't the best hitter in baseball, this guy was. Hank Aaron? Whoa, Hank Aaron does not want, but that's a good guess. I like that guess. Anybody? Well, what is Ty Cobb? Uh, Ty Cobb. Yeah. And the other is. Uh, uh, and um, I'm fumbling here because I can't recall, but St. Louis Cardinals had a great hitter. And uh, I'll Stan, think of his name in a Stan moment. Stan Musial. What? Stan Musial. Stan Musial. Stan Musial. Stan Musial. Nope, nope, no. nope. Stan never did it once. <laughs> one of my favorite players, but he never did it. But I'll think of the other one, but the St. Louis Cardinals in the 20s. Hit 403 times. Crazy. And, uh, uh, okay, next subject. Uh, poisonous creatures. U.S. history? Poisonous. Creatures. World history. All right. Uh, no. Poisonous creatures. Oh. Creatures. <laughs> Is that I'm, on yeah, there? you stay. Yeah, you, you stay here. You stay with me. You stay with me because you can hear us. Quite a good Okay. Now, okay, here's the subject. Uh, snakes. Let's do snakes, then we'll do uh, water creatures. What snake kills more people than any other snake? Thousands more. Rattlesnake. What? Rattlesnake. What snake? Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake. No. Black Mamba. Who said Cobra? Why? Because they're, because they're near people. In India, they lose three or 4,000 years. In India, and they're all over the country, and they're in the villages, and they hide and hunt. And so it's easy for children and young people to walk into a trap. 
Right. And the cobra either spits on it or bites them. Right. That's right. Now, uh, poisonous creatures in the sea. Now, we know the stonefish is very poisonous. We know that sea snake is poisonous. But there's one snake that if you touch or get bit by it, <laughs> Uh, you are almost universally going to die as a human. It's a sea creature. And what is the name of that creature? Moray eel? Not the mosquito. Black mamba? No, no, the black mamba and the uh, it are the two snakes that are indigenous to the uh, Central and South America, but they don't kill the most people because they're land animals. We're talking in the, in the, and they're not near people. We're talking in the ocean now. All right, here, here's the answer. It's a, it's a creature shaped like uh, this. Puffer fish? Nope. A sea anemone? Box. A box? Box. What, what kind of what kind of creature can you see through? Oh, jellyfish box, jellyfish. What box jellyfish? Jellyfish. jellyfish. Box jellyfish is correct. That's right. That is the most dangerous thing to humans that I have been able to discover. So that's poisonous creatures. Next subject, anybody? Football. Oh, right. I like that one. All right. Um, my wife likes it even better. NFL football. Now, uh, there are two teams in NFL history that have won the Super Bowl eight times. Can you name them? Steelers. Who? The Steelers. The Steelers has won. What's the other? Patriots a second. Okay, now we're getting to the hard part. The That's easy. New England part. Patriots. What two teams have lost the most Super Bowls? <laughs> what? Broncos and what other team? Buffalo. Who? Buffalo Bills. Wrong. They didn't go that many times. What about the, cow the Cowboys? What? Cowboys. Wrong. We lost five Miami Super Bowls Dolphins. in addition to the Broncos. 49ers? Wrong. Uh, Wrong. The Ravens. The answer is the same team that won eight. New England lost <laughs> five. So there, there you have uh, sort of an irony that they have lost the same number as the Broncos and they won the same number as the Pitts. Uh, as the uh, Pittsburgh. Okay, next subject. Give me one. Ocean extremes. What did you say? Ocean extremes. Ocean extreme. Now that's a hard one, but uh, well, there's a lot of good books I've read on that recently. It's just that it's hard to, to frame the questions. But here's, if I were to ask you, what is the smartest creature in the ocean, what would you tell me? A dolphin would be one of the two. Whale? What? Whale. Whale. <laughs> Orca. No. no. Octopus. Octopus. That is right. How'd you know that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is that is right. They, octopus don't they, they can identify people. They know their feeders when they're when they're domesticated. They can crawl through spaces that are unbelievable. Now let's talk about got nine brains too. Let's talk about uh, uh, the largest fish in the ocean. What the, what is it? Uh, blue whale. Whale. Wow, well, it's not a fish. Blue no, fish. Uh, whale what? shark. Whale shark. Not a fish. I mean, the whale shark is. Ocean sunfish? The largest fish in the ocean, what did he say? He said sunfish. 
No, others, no, others no. said whale shark. Whale shark. Who said that? Whale shark is the largest fish in the ocean, far away. And it, what does it eat? Plankton. I don't even. It's 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 not harmful to humans. Next subject. Historic sidekicks. Oh God. Do any of you run the Boulder Bowler? Okay. There is a guy named Bird Carlson. Any of you heard of him? Bird Carlson's older than I am, which is quite old. And he has every year, every over at this club over here, Flat Irons Club, he would give me sidekick stuff. You know, what was that man's butler's name and that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, <laughs> the guy who ran the Boulder Bowler and won every year in his age group uh, uh, until he was in the 80s, literally. And, and, and he just used to stump me with his stuff. I'm going to give you an easy one. What's the name of Tonto's horse? Yeah. Right. Right. Some old timer remembers the radio. Scout. Get, get him up, Scout. What? Yeah. Scout. 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 Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Okay, I'll try, try to repeat the answer. Next subject. She had a lot of good ones on here. Uh, world religions. World religions. Don't have a lot on that, but I can give you a couple of items. Okay. What is the... Give me two questions. What's the largest number of people, largest organized religion in the world today? More people belong than any other organized religion. Islam. Christian. What? Muslim. Christian. Why does always guess that? No. Buddhist. No. Hindus. What? Hinduism. Wrong. Is that Christianity? Christianity. Christianity, Christianity is, the is the largest religion in the world today in numbers. Now, what's the largest organized Christian religion? It's not Methodist. Catholicism. What? Catholic. Orthodox. Roman oh. Catholic. Now, we're talking percentage growth every year. Oh. Salt Lake City. Yes. Oh. Oh. Mormon religion is the Mormon? fastest organized Christian religion in the U.S. today. Okay? So much for religion. Let's move on. <laughs> you know, something you're interested in, something you don't know about. We've got world or worst disasters. The All right. I love that one. I love that one. That's why I wore this. Um, worst disasters uh, at sea. Let's start with at sea. With what? At sea. At sea. What's the worst, worst ship disaster, disaster in terms Titanic. of loss of life? And said Titanic. That's not the Titanic. No, you, everybody would guess this. And I got a story about this. But anyway, the answer is, and I'll give you the, day, the uh, time frame. January 1945. What was going on in 45? Pearl Harbor. What? No, 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 no. That was only 800. We're talking 9,000 lives. That's Pearl Harbor. January. Well, you, we wouldn't know about it, but the people in Russia know about it. Oh, Chernobyl. No. See. No. <laughs> the Gustav Wilhelm was Gustav a Wilhelm. big cruise ship by the Germans in the Puerto Riga as the Russian steamroller came through into Western Europe. And they loaded it up with wounded prisoners, Nazis, and nurses. They put them on board and they went out, overloaded 11,000 people, and a Russian submarine torpedoed it, and all but about 2,000 died. Wow. Well, that's the greatest sea disaster. Let's talk about U.S. What's the greatest disaster on land in the U.S.? Latest loss of life. Well, in, do you count Texas City? 
What? Do you count Texas City? No, no, we're talking eight, 9,000 people here. That happened in 1900. You remember where? Where? Nope, it was a hurricane. San Francisco earthquake. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, Galveston, Texas. Now the fire, the um, San Francisco fire and the Johnstown flood had quite a few losses of life, but nothing compared to Galveston. So that's the biggest disaster in the U.S. was Galveston, Texas. Next subject. World capitals. World capitals. Oh, one other thing about the sea thing. I walked, you remember when Whole Foods was down here in Baseline? You remember that five, six years ago? I walked in there wearing this hat that I wore today and a little lady behind the counter said, were you on the Titanic? <laughs> I said, listen, lady, I'm old, but you know, a hundred and eight, give me a break. I mean, hundred and eight years old, give me a break. What'd you do? Major history? Um, yeah. All right, world capitals. And there's some good state capitals too, but world capitals, what's the highest state capital in the world? Highest elevation? The not Lima. It's La Paz, Bolivia. La Paz, Bolivia. Right on. Right on. That's the highest capital in the world. Now, what's the... Um, what? What is the lowest elevation capital? Uh, the lowest elevation capital. That's a good one, too. It may be um, Islamabad uh, in uh, or Bangladesh. But I'm not, I'm not sure of that. But, but uh, so I, I do know the highest, but I'm not sure. Now, the largest population, now that goes between three cities. What's the largest population state, uh, world capital? Tokyo, London. Mexico City. And Mexico City. Other... Joe? <laughs> Mexico. What? Mexico City. Mexico City, yeah. Mexico City. Mexico City is the second, also the second highest capital in the world. Now let's move from there into state capitals. I'm a native Colorado and I'm pretty proud of the state. I know a lot of Colorado trivia. I don't have it on here. But uh, if I were to ask you, what's the highest state capital in the United States, what would you tell me? What? Denver. Denver. Wrong. Santa Fe is correct. Give that man a, a bonanza. Yes, sir. Santa Fe, New Mexico is higher than the U.S. What's the smallest populated state capital? You don't have to name it. Just give me the state. South Dakota. Nope. They're in there. They're Helena? about third or fourth. Is it Helena, Montana? What? Helena, Montana. Nope. There are too many people there. Could it be that? Montpelier or one of the New England states? That is right. It is Montpelier, Vermont. Oh. And uh, here's the harder one that you should get, but I don't know if you will. West of the Mississippi is the largest state capital in the U.S. Now, most state capitals are not the largest city. Then there's an exception. But most state capitals are not the largest city. But this, this state capital is the largest city and the largest state capital population-wise in the entire country. What is that? Salt Lake or Denver? What? Salt Lake. No. Denver. No, no, no. Seattle. Oh, oh, Phoenix, yeah. Arizona. Uh, All right, how many of you have kids or grandkids that are in junior high. I mean, that are, you know, studying geography. I got All right, Dennis, I got Bill. I got I'm one for you. And I want you to participate in this. I love this one. It's about state capitals. Bill, you've got a mic over there. West, <laughs> west of Los Angeles. All right. Think of the map Los Angeles, California. 
How many? I'm going to ask you to vote, and you ask them to vote, and you're going to get choices. One of these is correct. The answer is one, two, three, four, or five. I'm going to ask you to vote on each of these. How many state capitals are west, and I only go around the world, I mean, just out to the Pacific, are west of Los Angeles? Those of you that think it's one, raise your hand. Those of you that think it's two, raise your hand. Those of you that think it's three, raise your hand. Those of you that think it's four, raise your hand. Those of you that think it's five, raise your hand. And this guy knows the answer. Yeah, Sacramento is further west than LA because LA sweeps back. Obviously, you're going to see that Oregon and Washington's capitals are on the western side of the state. How do you know the so, names of those capitals? Yeah, so Olympia, Washington, and Oregon is Salem. And then you've got Alaska, which is June, Anchorage. It's Juneau. It's Juneau's a capital. Okay, then you, you go have around the horn. Honolulu. Honolulu as well. Honolulu, Juneau, Alaska, Olympia, Washington, Salem, Oregon, Sacramento's west of LA. And as he said, because of that crook in California and Nevada, Carson City is west of Los Angeles. You got that one? No. That's kind of a good one. I like that. So that'd be six. <laughs> that would be six. All right, next subject. Any... That's six, if we count them, Chuck. What? That's six capitals. Six, that's six. Six. I'm sorry, I can't hear right. Hey, Chuck, I have to let you know we've got one more, one more question. You named six capitals. Oh, no, five. No, no, five capitals. Right. Chuck, we've got... No, oh, no, no, I did. I, I named Honolulu, Juno. Uh, Olympia, Washington, uh, Salem, Oregon, uh, Sacramento, I mean, uh, Sacramento, and uh, Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, Chuck, we've got time for one more question. Okay, one more question. Then Last one. Go. One more. Oh, God, don't, don't go into that one. All right, now that we have that one. Let's get another one. National flags. National flags. I've got one on that. Um, sort of interesting. Most flags are rectangular, right? But one flag is square. Well, actually, two flags in the world are square flags. And they're both in Europe. Has anybody been to those countries that have two, have a square flag? One's a country, one's a city state. Oh. And they're only a few hundred miles apart. Is it Vatican? And Vatican is one. What's Switzerland? Switzerland. Uh, the only other country with a square flag. Uh, the only country with a square flag is Switzerland and Vatican, of course, is independent city state. Okay, I think we've exhausted this. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. <laughs> Chuck, as a token of our appreciation, we have actually we ended our national flags oh. for a reason because we have a globe oh. paperweight with the rotary emblem on it for you so to remember your time with us and also. Now you've got all of the countries in the world in your pocket. Oh, good. <laughs> thank so you. thank, thank you, you so much for your time and help here because we really appreciated this fun part of our five-way test. Uh, so thank you again. Five-way test. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So Chuck, we'll have to get your email address from you after the meeting so that maybe a few other organizations can tap into you as a resource for them. Um, with that said, I know that we are just a minute under the hour, but I did want to point out there's a couple other national flags that are pretty cool, right, Chuck? So maybe next time you come back, we can talk about the, uh, the non-rectangular. I'm version. still here, yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, hopefully soon. Um, with that said, as we're hitting the end of the hour, don't forget, this is Peach Week.
It is a very important week for us. So please, everyone, uh, go talk to Bob. And if it's Wednesday, it's Rotary. Rotary. <laughs> is anybody here a native Colorado besides me? If you're interested.